Hey, what's up you guys? This is Sentai22 here. How you guys all doing? Bringing you some awesome Power Ranger news to tell you guys. First off, I want to tell you the the Ju2 footage, uncut uh, footage that would never see the light of day, uh, we thought, but it was suddenly discovered. Uh, it's fully uncut Ju2 footage that unfortunately never made it to the final products of some of these episodes of Mighty Morphin um, as well as the Toy Fair 2014 and the Power Rangers Super Mega Force booth and all the great toys that will come out soon so uh, let's talk about first the G2 uh, for those of you who are I guess not known about the origins of Power Rangers, it was based on a Japanese show. The original Mighty Morphin Power Ranger was based on the 16th installment of the Super Sentai franchise, Kyoru Sentai's Ju Ranger, and it consisted of 50 episodes. Unfortunately, because of the popularity of Mighty Morphin, they did not want the show to end and they already exhausted pretty much all of the footage that was in the original uh, Jew Ranger City Jew Ranger series so they decided to uh, call Toei make some US exclusive Sentai footage for Mighty Morphin and what came out was really awesome it consisted of 25 new monsters as well as uh, of course the new character you could say mannerisms uh, from the brainy Billy to the relationship between the green and pink ranger to the more feminine uh, yellow ranger so it's pretty interesting now what's interesting though about the uncut footage is that some of them never really made it to the cutting room floor just because of a lot of reasons for example could be as you probably heard about the original three leaving they probably cut some of these stuff out in order for not put so much to put much dialogue which was originally intended to have more dialogue in that sep in that episode but they removed it already because of their departure as well as some that were pretty much inappropriate for children which I will explain as well um, the upgrades, of course, uh, they upgraded the Thunderzords way too early to exhaust all of the G2 footage that they had they had acquired. I mean, these guys paid a lot of money to for Toei to them to produce these uh, s these special scenes exclusively for Mighty Morphin. So now, one thing interesting about the G2 monsters is that unlike in G Ranger, were the majority of the monsters of the week were based off of mythical creatures or uh, monsters that were based out of inanimate objects. The Ju-2 monsters were actually based off of real life animals. I mean, the turban shell, of course, was, was based off of a slug and uh, Octo Phantom, of course, is an octopus and Flytrap, of course, is a plant. Basically, they were based off of flowers and animals that was about it no mythical creatures or dark knights which I don't even know why they didn't try to do anything creative just making animal monsters but still it was it's pretty awesome though now the the uncut footage is in the link in the description below it was uploaded by the incredible Jeff Pruett who was the stunt creator for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for many many years thanks Jeff for uploading this awesome treat for us. Now the footage consisted of uncut footage of of the selected uh, Jew two monsters, uh, footage from Primitor, Bloom of Doom, Octo Phantom, Invincible Flytrap, and Turban Shell. Unfortunately, those are the Jew, the full uncut Jew two footage that they could obtain. Unfortunately, uh, the Parantis head battling it out. Uh, with the original Megazord and the Stag Beetle uh, with the original uh, Putties, unfortunately, will never be seen. But who knows? Maybe there is uh, there is some more Jutu uh, footage out there, uncut, 
that still needs to be discovered so this is a really really awesome treat you know so now in some of the footage I really like the battle with the turbid shell and the original Megazord that has to be one of the most badass battles that I've seen it's kind of a shame it never really went to it never really went into that episode which originally turbid shell was destroyed by the Thunder Zord as well as the really awesome fights uh, with the Venus, the invincible uh, fly trap and you know the coordination with the green and yellow ranger fights with the original putties was just fantastic unfortunately uh, there are some reasons as to why like I mentioned before there were some footage that were just too inappropriate for children like uh, there was this one scene uh, as you guys probably know uh, the Octo Phantom captures the yellow, pink, and black ranger. In the original Mighty Morphin episode, uh, they're tied up. But in the Ju 2 footage, they're actually tied up, crucified, you could say. Like, they were just like that. So you could definitely see why they decided to take that out. The Primitor Ju 2 footage uncut was pretty cool as well. I did not realize that they actually had a roll call scene at the end of the Primitor battle. It was pretty awesome to see the uh, the Ju, Ju Ranger pose, Ju Ranger roll call. Even though you didn't hear any sounds, I mean, you could just use your imagination, of course. So, yeah, I mean, those were all the monsters that, unfortunately, has the full uncut footage. I mean, of course, you guys wanted to see the Turb, uh, the Perantis head, as well as the Stag Beetle. But who knows, maybe there's more uh, videos out there that, you know, Jeff hasn't discovered yet. So let's just see what happens in the near future. But all in all... This is a really, really fantastic f treat for us Power Ranger fans, as well as Super Sentai fans in general. Alright, now let's move on to the next topic, which is the Toy Fair 2014 and the Power Rangers Super Mega Force toy line. Brand new toys that will be coming down the pike in about a few months. Um, here's what we know so far. Uh, in the legacy uh, line will continue on to 2014 so that's pretty good uh, who knows we might get to see a leg legacy thunder zord in the near future or legacy tiger zord obviously they'll probably do the legacy tiger force force because tommy's popular tommy so as well uh the legacy titanus will come will be coming out and it will retail for two hundred dollars of course that's without the tax but if you factor in the tax obviously depending on what state you live in it'll probably cost you a few dollars here obviously it'll probably cost me around maybe 230 to 240 I mean who knows actually maybe depending on how Toys R Us likes to uh, price gouge on Power Ranger figures and toy merchandise that's it's no surprise that I really doubt this will just this will just be over 200 not 200 straight and of course we besides the legacy Titanus we get the legacy Dragon Zord now uh, judging by the photos of course this is a prototype um, it's kinda sad that we don't have the uh, the uh, the chest lights uh, that was in the original but hey we're getting a more improved version of the original Dragon Zord of course this is a lot a lot better in terms of kind of the accuracy of the TV show of course he has the more uh, show accurate tail as well as the more show accurate fingers instead of just straight fingers you get like like these like that that it's in the um, TV series and of course uh, the upcoming legacy Power Ranger figure line which will consist of the Red Rangers of the past as you've probably seen the photos you had you see Lost Galaxy Red, Ninja Storm, um, Time Force, Wild Force uh, figures uh, besides the Red Rangers of course you will get to see uh, some six Rangers in this to in this legendary Power Ranger 5 inch figure for, uh, toy line uh, five inch figure line uh, you we get to see uh, the titanium ranger 
uh, the Lunar Wolf, which is kind of interesting, the two Gold Rangers, Zeo and Samurai, and of course, the legendary Six Ranger, Tommy himself, the Green and White Ranger in the, in the middle. <laughs> uh, so, one thing I like about the 5-inch figures is that they're kind of semi-muscular. They're not really that bulky like the armored Red Ranger or the armored Green Ranger. So that's that's a plus right there. And uh, and it, it did say they're going to include some really uh, unique weapons uh, that... If you look at... There was some promotional fig figures of Dino Thunder Red having his Dino Staff which originally in the toy line of Dino Thunder didn't, it, it didn't have so it's pretty interesting to see that so who knows uh, what other surprises the other Red Ranger wep the other Red Ranger figures will have in terms of weapons and, and other stuff so and of course uh, let's not forget the Ranger keys of course uh, it will consist of 60 ranger keys of course although I really doubt the majority will be female I mean if you look at all of the ranger keys that were released in the uh, the wave uh, the first wave of ranger keys there was just mostly male figures obviously um, I guess Bandai doesn't think that there are female fans uh, so it's kind of a shame really I mean I really do hope I mean, I mean the only female range, the only ranger key that they have, of course, is the Ninja Storm blue key, which, of course, if you've probably seen, uh, if you've seen the first episode of Go Kaiger, you see uh, Noah transforming into the uh, blue Ninja Storm Ranger. Um, but still, I mean, come on! I hope that they release full teams, not all, not three male teams in each in each set it's ridiculous I mean obviously they won't release all of the I mean of course they will release some of the special keys the six ranger keys but at convention exclusives let's just hope that doesn't happen but I kinda guarantee they'll probably do it okay guys that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this really awesome video about the cool Jutsu stuff as well as uh, the upcoming toys for the Power Rangers Super Mega Force tour line. Now, I want to hear from you. What was the most exciting thing that you saw at the Toy Fair 2014 on the Power Rangers Super Mega Force booth, as well as what is, what is your favorite Jutsu monster? Please post it in the comment section. This is Sentai22, and uh, thanks for watching.